we poor suffering f souls fallen into this ocean of material existence are in the most unfortunate si situation of being separated from Krishna due to our own wicked mentality. Krishna bahir mokhaya bhogavan chakare nikatastha maya tare japati adhare. Due to being inimical to Krishna, our desires change from wanting to serve Krishna to wanting to enjoy independently our senses and Maya is just there to catch us and binds us up with all kinds of material desires. So we're Krishna Bahimuk. We're turned away from Krishna. What is the solution? The solution is to turn toward Krishna. How, how does that happen? How can we turn toward Krishna? Sadhu Shastra Kripai Jodi Krishnon Mukhoi Sheji Nishtare Maya Tahare Charai. When, by the mercy of sadhus and Shastra, Vedic literature, we become Krishnonmurk. We, we, we turn around. We be, instead of Bahimurk, turning our face away from Krishna, we turn around and face Krishna. In other words, we become inclined to serve Krishna. Then, uh, just by that, we become delivered from material existence and Maya lets us go. So we're most fortunate if we can take to Krishna consciousness. Everyone in this material world is unfortunate due to forgetting Krishna. One who remembers Krishna by the mercy of devotees and the Vedic scriptures becomes fortunate. I've heard it said, one of those Prabhupada said, that Srila Prabhupada had said that one who takes to Krishna consciousness is most fortunate. That's understandable. And one who, having taken to Krishna consciousness, again goes away is most unfortunate. Janiya Shunya Bish Kaino. Narotandas laments his own position as he perceives it. Hari Hari Bifale Janama Gawainu Manusha Janama Paya Radha Krishna Nabhajiya. Janiya Shunya Bisha Kaino. He's lamenting, calling out, Hari, Hari. Oh, uselessly. <clears throat> I have taken birth and lived my life, having got a human birth, which is meant for self realization, which means ultimately to serve Ratha and Krishna. I didn't serve Ratha and Krishna. Therefore, knowingly, I have drunk poison. So it's a most unfortunate situation when you when some someone deliberately inflicts harm on himself or 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 knowing better he should know better uh, he inflicts harm on himself uh, how is it possible that someone who has this knowledge of krishna consciousness and is exposed to the bliss of krishna consciousness how is it that they can having been delivered from that horrible situation, most suffering situation of material existence, they again go back to material existence. They try to forget Krishna. Maya, Krishna's illusory energy, has two main methods of action, modus operandi. There is her avaranatmika shakti, avaranatmika vritti, her, her potency by which she keeps the jivas covered in material existence. And then when someone tries to escape from material existence, she has her prakshipatmika vritti, her special potency. Oh, for those who are coming out of her clutches to get thrown back in again. In other words, she make, it is her uh, unpalatable duty, duty is not always pleasing, 
it is our duty to test the conditioned souls who have taken to Krishna consciousness to see how sincere they are by trying to pull them back into material existence. Uh, we learn from Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Janmanamant. Bahunam Janmanamante Jnana Vang Mang Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Samahatna Sudurlava. One who realizes after cultivating knowledge, spiritual knowledge over many lifetimes, someone who comes to the point of realizing that what I'm really looking for is Krishna. I'm looking for that all pervading reality. That all-pervading reality is Krishna. Someone who realizes that and surrenders to Krishna on that basis, Krishna says, is a very rare, great soul. So again comes the question that we're having gone through many lifetimes, why would one go away? Uh, why, why would one turn back again? We're, we're turned away from Krishna, Bahimuk. Then we turn toward Krishna, Unmuk, and then again we turn away. Some clue is there in, in Bhagavad Gita? Well, uh, Krishna himself uh, directly states, it's more than a clue, Ashwada dhana purusha dharmasyasya paranta, dharmasyasya paranta, aprapya mangne vartante mrityu sangsara vartmani. One who is not faithful on the path of devotional service, O conqueror of foes, does not attain me, but attains to again goes back to repeated birth and death in material existence. But still, why if one had attained faith, which one should one become unfaithful? Now, those who go away from Krishna, having turned toward him, they go back to material existence. Um, it may not always be gross fall down. Gross fall down means one becomes an out and out materialist with the eat, drink, sleep, be merry and enjoy for tomorrow we shall all be dead program. It may be that someone takes to Krishna consciousness but they they don't they they don't fully go away from it or they maintain some semblance of it. Especially this verse, this Bahunam Jamanamante Gyanavang Mang Prapadyate. This gives us a clue that of, of a kind of person who takes the Krishna consciousness but becomes attracted to impersonalism because someone on the path of knowledge, generally, in, in, at least in Gorya Vaishnav terminology, the Jnana often refers to people who are cultivating spiritual knowledge with the aim of merging into the impersonal absolute. So people have cultivated that for many, many lifetimes and then they turn toward Krishna with the idea of surrendering to him. But gradually it, it may dawn upon them the enormity of what they're doing. I have, I have to surrender my independence. I have to see everyone and everything according to Krishna's vision. For instance, Namang Dishkushino Mudha Prapadyante Narada Maha Maya Pahritagyana Asurang Bhavamashrita. Krishna says that those who do not surrender to me, they are rascals. They are of different kinds. They, they may be classified as uh, the lowest among men, fools, uh, apparently very learned and knowledgeable, but actually not, and just out and out demons. Now, the impersonalist generally doesn't criticize. We see the impersonalists and in the modern. Where where are the impersonalists in the modern age? There are a few still tradition following the traditional impersonalist sampradayas, but the, the disease of impersonalism on Mayavad, Neo-Mayavad has spread all over the world in, in this new age 
so-called philosophy in which you're supposed to be nice to everyone, you don't criticize anyone, and everything's wonderful, keep on smiling, make sure your teeth are white. When you're smiling, give a good smile. Most important, most important thing to do is smile. That's one of the mottos of, that we hear from Neo-Mayavadis, although we don't find that in uh, Krishna's teachings in Bhagavad Gita, or even in the Mayavadis, in the traditional Mayavad teachings for that matter. But uh, it's very important for them to be nice and to surrender to Krishna's teaching. It, it's very cut and dried, very clear. On one side there is Krishna, on the other side there is Maya. Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hoy Ondaka Jaha Krishna Taha Nahi Maya Adhika. One is either surrendered to Krishna and he's in spiritual consciousness or he's not and he's in material consciousness. It's the difference between light and day. And they, they can be between, between light and day, there is a uh, interim period, dusk and dawn, <clears throat> though that may be compared to the, uh, the dawn, may be compared to the stage in which one is coming out of Maya and uh, one is doing sadhana and beginning to see things as they are. And within a short time, he should come to the light. With the light here doesn't mean the light of impersonal oneness, but the light of jnana deeper of knowledge by which we see ourselves and Krishna. We see Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I'm meant to surrender to him. So th this concept of surrendering to God, to Krishna, accepting as him as the Supreme Controller, can be very difficult for persons who have been cherishing the idea over many lifetimes that I myself am God. Uh, it's, a, it's a very big step for them. In that sense, people who are materialistic but approach Krishna, they're in a better situation. The artho, uh, artho jignasa artati. Well, especially the artha, the distressed, and the person desiring wealth, they're materialistic, but they approach Krishna with the understanding that he's much greater than me, he can help me. But the, the Mayavadi idea is that, well, oh, it's horrible even to say it, but they, they do say it. Uh, and just to highlight the madness and the rascaldom of it, they say that, well, Krishna's not actually a person, but he's uh, some representation of the ultimate truth, which is ultimately impersonal. They, they deny the... <clears throat> They deny the eternality of Krishna's form, Ishvara Paramakrishna, Satyadananda Vigraha. They deny that, and instead they think the form of Krishna, his eternal spiritual blissful form to whom we have to surrender, that's also material. In this regard, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prakrita Koryamane Vishnu Kaleba, Vishnu Ninda Nahi Iha Upur. That one who thinks that Krishna's transcendental form is a product of material energy is, what's he doing? He's blaspheming Krishna in the worst possible way. So even people, even the Mayavadis, they may even chant the name of Krishna, but they're, they're chanting, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, it's just like, uh, it's like attacking him. The arrows of Krishna's enemies don't hurt him as much as the prayers of the Mayavadis. But it seems like they're very, it may seem like they're very devotional. So someone may turn away from Krishna, turn away from the path of pure devotional service, but seem to be devotees. They may revert to the impersonalism that they held before, either in this life or in previous lives. A sign of that is that people who are supposed to be in Krishna consciousness, uh, uh, but they, they, they start to become averse to talking about Krishna, and Krishna consciousness. And they may go on giving talks, but there's no Krishna. Uh, 
Another thing we can observe is that many of them, well, they're not that many of them, thank Krishna, but the number may increase. It's, it's a very dangerous and slippery slope to, to try to hide Krishna or, or lose a taste for, it, it, for publicly presenting Krishna or not have the, the faith to do so if we think that I am bringing, I am converting people and then how do I do it? Instead of thinking that let me be an instrument and let me speak what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says to speak, Jari Deko Tare Koha Krishna Upadesh, instead of speaking Krishna's instructions and let Chaitanya Mahaprabhu work the magic, then instead if we think well let me say something else that people like to hear and then we can bring more people and uh, but people don't like to hear about Krishna or surrendering to Krishna. They prefer to hear other things. So let, let's speak some other things. And one, one trend I've noticed is uh, talking Buddha stories, stories of the Buddha. There are so many stories. They're, they're probably 99% apocryphal, which means they didn't really happen. We don't know. Uh, the, the Buddha's lives from the life of the, this, anyway, the, the life of the Buddha was written, Lalita Vistar was written centuries after Buddha left this world. And, and then there are so many Jataka stories of Buddha in previous lives, how he was a good animal or a good person, and eventually he became the Buddha, Shakya Singh. This is a disaster in Vaishnava society to, to get start telling Buddha stories. Now, of course, some of the teachings of Buddha, they are in line with Krishna consciousness, especially Janma Mrityu Jaravyadhi Dukkha Dosha Anudarshanam. That we should see that birth, death, old age and disease are miserable. This is the st starting point of Buddhism, but actually not anudarshanam, that one should see for what, well, I guess it is anudarshanam, seeing through the eyes of Buddha, but here anudarshanam means when Krishna says that through the eye of Shastra and pre previous authorities who follow Vedic Shastra. Uh, <clears throat> so Buddha, he actually took that Vedic philosophy and then came up with his own ideas, and it's disastrous for several reasons. Uh, one main reason is because Buddhism is by definition not spiritual. We can say, well, Buddhism, of course it's spiritual. But one of the main teachings of Buddha is there's no such thing as spirit. What in, uh, what in Sanskrit is called Atma, Buddha says Anatma. There's no spirit. So it's, Buddhism is by definition not spiritual. And they don't believe in any ultimate material reality or any, uh, sorry, in any ultimate reality. Uh, their ultimate aim is just to snuff out nirvana. In their definition, nirvana means just to put out a candle of a, there's, of a stream of consciousness which somehow gets in, incarnated in different births. It's not spiritual. And then what does spiritual mean? Spiritual means, if it's not spiritual, then it must be material. Krishna has two basic, or his multiple energies are divided into, or manifest as two. One is spiritual and one is material. And uh, in materialism, there may be, there may be morality, as the Buddha stories, they, they, Jataka stories, they give the idea of morality. Uh, but by definition, they're meaningless because in Buddhism, there's no meaning to anything. So by definition, Buddhism is meaningless, which means that it's it, the, the very, one of the bedrocks of Vaishnava philosophy is that there is meaning, there is reality. It's not what we perceive as reality, but that, that but in Buddhism, it's not there, and and there's no surrender. There, there may be moral, high values, but it's all on the material platform. And exactly how by from becoming moral to becoming a Buddha, 
I, they may have some explanation. They actually have very, the different schools of Buddhism are very developed philosophies because it's like a developed philosophy to explain one plus one equals three. And then you have to get into complex mathematics to obfuscate the fact that it doesn't make any sense. So in, in Buddhism, there's no surrender to Krishna. There's no love of Krishna. There's no Krishna. There's not even you. There's not even Buddha. So if, if Vaishnavas become, start to get a habit of saying Buddha stories, it's very, very dangerous. We're not Buddhists. Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschatya Desha, Tarne, Srila Prabhupada, he defined his mission in delivering the Western world from impersonalism and voidism. Shunyavad refers to Buddhism or spe specific school of Buddhism. <clears throat> now, n people like to hear Buddha stories, no doubt, but it doesn't help them come any closer to Krishna. And, and in fact, by telling so many stories like this, it may obfuscate the fact that we are supposed to surrender to Krishna. And people like that. It, it, it gives, just like this whole new age, it gives you a feeling of being spiritual while not being spiritual without any surrender or hard work of surrender. You, we, you may say, well, we're hearing about Buddha. He's also Vishnu avatar. Yeah, but that's not our recommended Vaishnava process. We hear about Buddha how? Nindasi yagya vidhe rahaha shruti jatam sadaya hridaya darshita pashu ghatam keshava dritta buddha sharira jaya jagadisha hare. We understand Buddha in context that he uh, is preached atheism by denigrating the Vedic literature for the purpose, which was required at that time, to stop the misuse of Vedic sacrifices for unnecessarily killing so many animals. So this way we understand Buddha, not that we take his teachings, although we may very selectively take some teachings which are in line with the actual message of the Vedas, Krishna consciousness. Uh, but then again, it's, it's not required, actually, because everything there is in the Vedas full and complete and perfect. Now, it may seem that I'm overly critical. I may be charged with that. In fact, I am. But I'm, I'm trying to point this out because there, there is a very real danger for the whole of Vaishnav society. The whole Vaishnav society can be misled if persons who are supposed to represent it to the public or to, to represent the parampara within the society of Vaishnavas, if they get this habit of speaking that which is not connected to Krishna, mm. not which, which doesn't directly reveal the truths of Krishna consciousness. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaking to his devotees said, Jodi ama pratishne hotake shabaka tabe krishna beti rikta nagaibaya. If you love me, he said, then do one thing. Just don't talk about anything except Krishna. Keep on this topic. Now, a few days ago, I, I gave a talk uh, on this Navai jano jatu katanchana vrajen makunda sevyaniva danga sangs rizim. This verse in which Narada tells Vyas uh, that a devotee of Krishna, even if he falls down and becomes like a materialistic, fruitive worker, he doesn't undergo material existence like, a, like an ordinary karmi because he cannot but remember Krishna. He'll come back to Krishna. So no one's going to go away from Krishna forever if they've taken up devotional service. But then we say, well, why is there so much warning against Mayavad? Why, why do the Shastras and Acharyas warn so much about that? Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, in, in one of his songs, talking about uh, giving up bad associations, says that, uh, paraphrasing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who says, Asat Sangatya, E Vaishnavacha, Sri Sangi, Eka Sadhu, Krishna Bhakta. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that 
the symptom of a Vaishnava is that he gives up bad association. And bad association in, in two categories, Sri Sangi, which means materialistic people, uh, and, or people who are very much uh, enamored by the prospect of enjoying their senses. Another is Krishna Bhakta, a non-devotee, someone who may seem to be very spiritual, but is not a devotee of Krishna, which refers to Mayavadis, impersonalists. So in this song, Bhakti Thakur says that the position of gross sense enjoyers, Vishaya Vimudha a Mayavadi Jan. He, he opens the song with that line. Uh, <clears throat> The, the, the vishai, the people who are in, in, engaged in sense gratification, they're fools. <laughs> but he goes on to explain that w much worse than, than the foolish materialists are the mayavadis because by the, the, the materialists can take the Krishna consciousness much more easily than the mayavadis who cultivate a sense of deliberate avoidance of Krishna. So that's when we see the, the uh, if people are supposed to be spiritualists or even devotees, if they speak in a way in which they seem to be deliberately avoiding speaking of Krishna, there's a big problem there. Ah... Uh, and we say, well, well, how can devotees be attracted to such things? It's very difficult to understand how devotees can be attracted to this superficial spiritualism in, in, of impersonalism and even want to share that with, these, with others. I, all I can surmise is that uh, this offense of Mayavad has been in their hearts for many lifetimes and... Uh, They didn't root it out. They, they didn't actually surrender to Krishna, or, they, or they, they made some offense by which this wrong idea entered their heart. Very, very dangerous for all of Vaishnava society to, if, if the impersonalist influence enters, keep it out. That's why we see Srila Prabhupada and all the Vaishnava chairs, they want so much, so much, don't, don't associate with Ayavadis, don't, definitely don't speak what they speak. Or, and then what happens? You, you get into, say, you stop talking about Krishna, and then you talk so many things. You become accustomed to not speaking about Krishna and, and at the same time being supposedly spiritual. It's a disaster. So let us all make the resolve to turn toward Krishna. That's... Prabhupada's mercy, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, gave us the opportunity to turn toward Krishna. That means we have to hear about Krishna. We have to chant about Krishna. <clears throat> simple, very simple. Having been come so fortunate to get on this path, let us not make the cardinal error of, again... Going away, drift, drift, drift. Don't drift. Run to Krishna, Atmanikshepa. Throw ourselves at Krishna's lotus feet. That with full faith. Otherwise, Ashada Dhana Purusha. If we don't keep faith, Dharma Syasya Parantapa, Aprapya Mang Nivartanta. We won't get Krishna. Mrityu Sangsara Vartna. Very, we're on a very dangerous edge. Shurasya dhara nihita duratteya durgang patas tatgave varanti. The path of spiritual life is like a razor's edge. Be careful. Call out for Krishna's help. Always calling out for Krishna's help. Turning toward Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vantakal patarubhas charki. Patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namo. Dante nithaya trinakam padayani patya kritva chaka kushatam eta da humbra vimi. He sadava sakala eva vihaya dura chaitanya chandra charane gurutam.